ask a critical care yes. or communication? Critical care. Okay, ma'am. Okay, I'm starting the timer. No people are coming. Okay. Okay, starting the timer. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Started the timer and here is your question. Okay. Right, if you have read and understood, kindly begin your station. Considering okay. the critical care station, how would you manage this patient? Okay, the manage the patient according to the ABC approach of the CRISP protocol, airway assessment and the treatment, and the breathing assessment and then breathing uh, and the treatment, and circulation assessment uh, to both uh, large bore cannula and the anticubital fossa, take uh, full blood count, urea and electrolyte, and blood group and cross uh, and uh, cross match, and they take uh, coagulation profile. And uh, and, uh, and the ECG and the division uh, start with uh, crystal light uh, one liter uh, if not respond can be added uh, one liter of the crystal light if not respond can be added uh, in a, in a drop with monitor the patient with blood pressure urine output and mental status and respiratory rate and the pulse rate and the uh, and the mental status and the capillary refill time. Uh, my professional diagnosis in regard to the case scenario, the patient have uh, uh, obstructive jaundice or post-hepatic uh, jaundice due to gallbladder uh, stone or due to a uh, carcinoma or due to uh, uh, pancreatic tumor. Good. Can you tell me what is the normal uh, level of bilirubin? The normal level of the bilirubin uh, from the 3 to uh, uh, 30 uh, millimole. Uh, okay, can you tell me uh, when it is apparent jaundice, how much would it be? Yeah, apparent jaundice more than uh, 35 millimole each, uh, each liter. Yeah, micromole, okay, per liter. All right, can you tell me in which form bilirubin is found in the blood? Yeah, ask unconjugated and uh, con uh, conjugated bilirubin. 
the conjugated bilirubin from the 0 to uh, uh, 0.3 milligram uh, every deciliter and the, uh, uh, and the total bilirubin from the 0.3 to 1.9 milligram uh, every deciliter. In this scenario, uh, urobilinogen is not detected in urine. Can you tell me why? Yes, because of the obstruction by the by the sun or the by the mass, the bilirubin can uh, not reach into the uh, to the gut to form a urobilinogen. All right, good. Can you tell me how bilirubin is processed in the gut? What's mom? Bilirubin metabolism. How is it processed in the in intestine? What is the metabolism of bilirubin? Yes. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Uh, after uh, breakdown of the red RBC and spleen, the hemoglobin releases it and break down into the hem and the globin chain, and uh, the globin chain uh, break down into the amino acid and the hem converted into the uh, bilirubin and, and uh, into the bilirubin and the release of the iron and the bilirubin released from the RBC is uh, is unconjugated. In the liver, uh, conjugate, conjugated with the glucuronic acid by a glucuronic uh, transferase enzyme and the conjugated bilirubin go into the bile and uh, out to the small intestine and the bile acid is reabsorbed in the terminal ileum to uh, participate in the anterior hepatic circulation and the conjugated bilirubin not absorbed and uh, instead passes into the colon. After that, by colonic bacteria, this is uh, the, the colonic bacteria, uh, this, uh, this Conjugate and metabolize the bilirubin into colorless urobilinogen, uh, which oxidizing to form stercobilin uh, to give characteristic of the stool of the brown in color. And 10% of the uh, urobilinogen is reabsorbed into the anterior circulation and re excreted into the bile by the kidney and give the color of the urine yellow, yellow color. Why uh, the LFTs, liver function test, are raised in this patient? ALT, ALP, and um, GGT, AST, why are they raised? What does it signify? Okay, my, uh, ALT increase the LT and the AST and the alkaline phosphatase. The alkaline phosphatase increase mainly due to obstructive jaundice and the LT and the ST mainly increase due to uh, other pathology in the liver like hepatitis and the hemochromatosis and the autoimmune hepatitis and the GGT increase uh, maybe due to uh, especially in patient with the alcoholic hepatitis. Good. Uh, which clotting factors will be deranged in this patient? Yeah, uh, the clotting factor uh, two and seven and nine and uh, ten because the liver uh, sign disease in the most clotting factor in the severe liver damage and biliary obstruction lead to decreased absorption of the vitamin K. Uh, this is the vitamin K required this factor like two and seven and nine and ten. Okay, can you please tell me what are the different types of jaundice? Yeah, the different types of the jaundice uh, uh, ask uh, prehepatic. Due to hemolytic anemia like glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency and hereditary spherocytosis and the Gilbert syndrome and the regular Najer syndrome due to defect of the glucuronide transferase enzyme and hepatocellular jaundice like hepatitis, uh, hereditary hemochromatosis, autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma, and alcoholic liver disease, and post hepatic due to uh, gallbladder stone, cholangic carcinoma, stricture, pancreatic tumor, and abdominal mass. and uh, drug induced cholestasis okay good can you tell me what are the functions of bile salts in the in the process of digestion of fat what's mom bile salts what is what are the functions of bile salts in the digestion of fat okay uh, the function of the bile salt uh, responsible for emulsification of the fat into mesolysts and uh, increase the surface area for the action of the enzyme, pancreatic uh, enzyme, and uh, uh, the bile salt uh, increase uh, increase uh, uh, absorption of the of the uh, pancreatic enzyme and the uh, emulsification of the fat into fatty acid uh, and uh, uh, decrease the surface tension and the break of the fatty globule into droplet and uh, enhance absorption of the fatty acid and the cholesterol and uh, enhance absorption of the fat soluble uh, vitamin uh, like uh, A with D with A with K and uh, uh, have negative charge uh, with the, through the conjugation with the glycine and the taurine and uh, uh, have the function solubilization and the transport of the lipid in Equals environment. 
Good. Can you tell me, uh, since clotting factors will be deranged in this patient, what measures can you take to correct the clotting abnormality? Yeah, by IV, uh, vitamin K, uh, 10 milligram IV, and the fresh fresh plasma by uh, 50 uh, milligram uh, every uh, kilogram. And uh, in the severe cases, uh, uh, need uh, brotorbin complex uh, concentrate. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, consult uh, with the hematologist. Good. Can you please tell me what investigations can be done in this case and why? Okay, after this investigation, full blood count urine and electrolyte and the liver function uh, can be done abdominal ultrasound to detect uh, the gold blood zone and uh, detect if any other pathology uh, lesion like uh, uh, mass in the pancreas uh, and uh, other uh, dilatation in the intra and extra hepatic ducts. Okay, good. Uh, why would you carry out these investigations? If like ultrasound shows a stone or dilated biliary tree, what would you do next? Yeah, done uh, uh, ERCB as a diagnostic and the therapeutic diagnostic to uh, detect the, the, the site of the stone and the therapeutic to uh, uh, for uh, ERC, uh, for, uh, for, the, for the stent and the relief uh, and the decompression of the obstruction. Okay, because of obstruction, if patient has fever and pain, what would you suspect? Yeah, suspected, uh, uh, suspected uh, ascending cholangitis like uh, charcot triad, fever and uh, abdominal pain and, uh, uh, and uh, mental status and rigor. Good. What should be the management if there is ascending cholangitis? Yeah, uh, the, the management of the recent cholangitis after uh, resuscitation and stabilize of the of the patient uh, and put the patient on the empirical uh, and the broad spectrum antibiotic or and, under uh, hospital guideline and can be done ARCB for decompression and the drainage of this uh, of this uh, uh, obstruction. Okay, good. Thank you. Bell is gone. Did you tell me about the primary and secondary bile source uh, bile acid? No. Just simple. All okay. Right, okay. The, yeah. The primary bile salt uh, synthesizes it in the liver, and secondary bile salt uh, result from the bacterial action in the colon, uh, like uh, uh, cholic acid of the uh, tower cholic, uh, cholic acid and the uh, galeco cholic acid and the uh, kinodoxy uh, cholic acid, like uh, tower kinodoxy cholic acid and the galeco kinodoxy cholic acid. This is Very bile good. salt. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, mom. Good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Right. Dr. Mohammed al are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Yes. Just a Okay, I'm starting the timer. And here is okay. your question. Right, if you have read and understood, kindly help me and identify the structure. In picture A, if you can see, what is this 13? Okay, this is the right. Uh, the what right are you looking at? Yes, very good. Can you tell me the boundaries of uh, femoral canal, uh, femoral triangle, sorry? Okay, superiorly by the inguinal ligament and yes. laterally sartorius muscle. 
and immediately by the dance of Dr. Long. Yes, good. Uh, how many uh, compartments there are, or what are the contents of? Femoral okay, it contains the femoral artery and the femoral vein and the femoral nerve and the uh, great calcineous vein and the femoral branch of the femoral nerve and All the right. deep and superficial inguinal lymph node. Okay, can you now help me to identify this one you said is uh, inguinal ligament? Oh, yeah. And then 13 is inguinal ligament. What is 21, please? Twenty-one is here. Can you most point medial. at this? Yes, most medial. Okay. Uh, this is the spermatic part. Uh, would that be so visible? Okay. What is ten? Ten. This is the femoral vein. Okay. What is next to it? Uh, it's six. The femoral artery. And seven. The femoral nerve. Okay, in this picture, eight is femoral. Uh, okay, which muscle can you see is here? Nineteen. This is the sartorius muscle. Okay, uh, can you tell me the attachment of sartorius muscle? Okay, uh, it is uh, from the leather to counter of the femur. Yes. Attached to the medial to counter of the femur. Okay. Can you help me and identify the structures on the right hand side? Which, uh, okay. what are you looking at? What is this? Five? This is the femoral, six is the femoral artery. Sorry. Eight six. is the femoral yes. vein. All right. Uh, and then 21 over here is what? This is the spermatic. 21. This is sartorius. This, this is sartorius. These are of opposite sides. See, that's why to confuse you about this. Okay, 11. 21 is the sartorius. Yes, uh, 11 please here. This is the inguinal ligament. Very good. How inguinal ligament is formed? It is formed by the epineurasis of the external optic muscles. Okay. Can you tell me? Uh, all right. Can you please tell me? Uh, right. Can you please tell me the boundaries of uh, adductor canal? Okay. It is formed uh, by the roof of the sartorius muscle. And posteriorly yes. by the adductor longus and the adductor medius, and lat uh, laterally by the fastus medialis. Okay, what are the contents of the adductor canal? Contains the superficial femoral artery and the superficial femoral vein. Yes. And so contains the femoral nerve and the femoral branch, yes. which is the femoral nerve. Okay, what do you understand by the term vascular lacuna? Vascular and muscular lacuna. lacuna. Yes. Vascular yes. lacuna is compartment beneath the inguinal ligament. Yes. Contains the femoral vessel and the lymph vessel and lymph node. And yes. the muscular lacuna this is compartment just beneath the inguinal ligament in the lateral, lateral part of the thigh. Yes. And it contains the Iliosaurus muscle and yeah. the femoral nerve and the lateral cutaneous nerve. Very good. Can you please tell me what is the purpose of the empty space in the femoral canal? It is allow expansion of the femoral muscles during increase in abdominal pressure or increased pressure from the lower limbs. Okay. Uh, what is the pathological? Uh, when is it used as a pathological way? This is the physiological uh, reason you have told me. What can be the pathological? Ben? What will happen? Hernia, femoral hernia. 
anything will uh, get through yeah, it. Yes. through the femoral canal yeah yeah it, and it can cause obstruction so yeah. that will lead to okay can you please t uh, what more can you tell me about the are there any triangles or any anything else you want to tell me what are the muscles of the anterior uh, or the thigh of the anterior compartment okay. of the thigh? Uh, it is, uh, there is the rectus femoris muscle and there is faster medialis and the faster lateralis muscle. And yes. the, also the iliotibial tract and the facial lateral muscle. And there is the gracilis muscle. And uh, there is the pectineus muscle as well. Okay. Can you please tell me the boundaries of the inguinal canal? Inguinal canal, okay. Yes. Anteriorly by the external oblique of and Yes, and? Uh, the in the lateral one third there is? Posterior, internal posteriorly by the transversal fascia. Okay. And the roof is made by the, the oblique muscle of the internal oblique and the transverse abdominal muscle. And floor? It, floor is formed by? The floor is made uh, media, medially by the lacunar ligament. Uh, medially, okay. Floor is grooved uh, surface of the inguinal ligament. Conjoined. Yes. Okay. Can you tell me? All right. There is more. I've lost all the questions that you've answered so quickly. Okay. What is the nerve related to anterior sphere iliac spine? The ilium nerve. Okay. Or lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. When it is, uh, because we're talking about the okay. interior of the thigh, when it is uh, trapped, then what does it yeah. call? Is the name given to it? Neuralgia? Uh, Parasitic amenitalgia. Yeah. What, what is, uh, yeah, can you tell me what happens in it? Uh, it when there is damage to yes. the lateral cutaneous nerve, Yes. There will be numbness and the paresthesia in the lateral part of the thigh. Yes. Good. Right. If you can tell me about the iliotibial tract, how is it attached? Okay. It is attached from the anterior superior iliac spine to the lateral condyle of the femur. It yes. is allow. Uh, Extension of the knee. Lateral condyle of the tibia, uh, distally. Yes. The condyle of the tibia. Okay. And uh, what are the muscles which inserts into it? Uh, the iliosaurus muscle. Gluteus maximus and the gluteus maximus. Tensor fascia lata. Okay. Okay. What is the clinical significance of iliotibial tract? It is stabilized the knee joint as the extension and it's first section. And yes. it's also important in walking or running. Running, walking and running, very good. Okay. You have told me, okay, what is the surface marking of adductor hiatus? Uh, it is about two third lining from the anterior superior iliac spine. Yes. And the, uh, to the adductor tubercular. Of the femur. Okay, good. Can you tell me what is femoral sheath? It is the, the femoral sheath is flying of the, from the anterior abdominal wall. Yes, made up of inferior pro prolongation of the transversalis and iliosos fascia from the abdomen and pelvis. Yes. Okay. Uh, and it is divided into compartments. 
Okay, can you tell me where would you palpate a uh, femoral artery? Uh, the mid inguinal point between the anterior superior iliac spine and the sensitive uh, yeah. to Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. All right. Okay, I think now I have covered the topic. Okay. Uh, or have I left anything? You can tell me if I've forgotten. Uh, we can the arteriogram or the femoral vessel, maybe. Yes, you can tell me. Uh, the femoral artery, it is continuation of the external iliac artery. It is divided. There is branched the uh, continuous superficial femoral artery. And Which then into the adductor canal. This one or this one? Yeah. Yes, yes. This one, right? Uh, the, and on the left side, this is the popliteal artery. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this is the femoral artery. Very this good. Is... Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. No. Dr. Aisha, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, can Dr. Mohammed or Dr. Sunday help Dr. Aisha? Can anyone Hello. help her? Good evening. Yes, good evening. Can you please help the girl? If you can yeah, I'll try. Yeah, thank you. If my net, if my network will not misbehave, but I think it's better now. So. Yes, if you can easily. It's history taking. All right. If both of you are ready, can I start the timer? Yes, ma'am. Yes, started yes. the timer, and here is the question. Right, if you have read and understood, kindly you begin your history taking. Hello, I'm Dr. Aisha, one of the surgical SHOs. Can I confirm your name and date of birth? Oh, hello, I'm Sam, 28 years old. Okay, uh, Sam, uh, can, I, can you please uh, tell me your reason of presentation uh, today? Yeah, um, doctor, I've been having this um, pain, you know, in my left knee, and uh, uh, I've had it for about three months now. So, but the thing is, this pain on uh, this um my knee, you know, I've had a, a surgery done before about fifteen years ago on this knee. You know when you know so when I used to play ball uh, more as a youth, and now I can I I think maybe something similar is happening to my knee because I'm not having pain, and uh, when I'm walking, I can't really rest on the knee. It's so and I'm it's so sorry to hear career. about thank okay. you. I'm so sorry to hear about that, Sam. Do you uh, need painkillers at the moment or should uh, no the pain is not so much, it's just that uh with it I can't play football and I can't do some exercise like running. It's you know it's really affecting my career. 
I can see your uh, concern at the moment. Uh, can you please tell me uh, um, from how long you've been having this pain? Oh, right now. So this right one now, started the, about three months yeah, ago. Two months ago, okay. Three, three. And, three months ago, okay. And does it yeah. start it suddenly or gradually? Well, I, I, it, it was gradually. Because oh, initially I didn't notice it, then it was it kept increasing. In can you describe? Tissue. Can you describe character of pain uh, for me? Oh, uh, so the pain uh, started gradually, but it kept increasing. You know, over the three months, then uh, and it's I don't know, it's kind of a you know uh, pinching me when I have some, you know, I feel some kind of a. Uh, um, sometimes I have lock knee, you know, then yeah. I have some kind of, you know, like slight stiffness and, you know, like some click sound sometimes. So, actually, when I'm trying to do exercise, I'm trying to bend the knee. So. Okay, okay. Yes. And what do you do uh, to make your pain better? Well, rest. And uh, sometimes I take a pain medication. Okay. Know, so. Okay, so can you just uh, uh, describe the, your severity of the pain on a scale of zero to ten, with the zero being the lowest and ten being the worst ever pain that you experience? Uh, when it first started, it was around one or two. If I'm to rate it, but right now it's around uh, five to six. So five and that is six. why I yeah, I think I, it's high time I really find solution to the pain. Yeah, I can understand that. I'm uh, so sorry about that. Can you please tell me in a bit detail that uh, have you ever felt that uh, your knee joint giving away while walking? A feeling uh, of yes, I, uh, yes. Actually, I, I uh, once in a while, I I feel that you know, like it, will, it, will, it will look as if I, I wanted to fall when I'm trying to um, rest my weight on the legs, something like that. Yeah. But not always. Okay. Okay, okay, that's all right. And do you have any uh, uh, joint becoming stiff in the morning? Any stiffness in the knee joint? Uh, not so, not really. Okay, and what about your um, uh, other joints? Do you have any problem with your other joints in the body? No, no, the other joint is fine. Okay, and do you have any fever or any rash on the body? No, not at all. Not at all. Okay. And do you have previous uh, history of trauma when you uh, when you said that uh, uh, years ago you had this pain? And can you describe it? Yes. Uh, so years ago I was playing football. So when I sustained an injury to my knee, and uh, uh, I was substituted, and then I was taken to the hospital and I was operated on. So and after that I could go back. I returned back to my footballing about after a few months. So, but the but doctors told him that time. I've so forgotten sorry. what they said. I've forgotten what they said, but I know. Okay, I have okay. With maybe okay, some that's completely I don't know. fine. Yeah. Okay, that's completely okay. fine. And uh, can you please tell me, do you have any allergies? No. No. Okay. And uh, um, do you, apart from this condition, what uh, what about your general health? Well, I keep perfectly okay. I'm a sportsman on on feet. That's good. And uh, what about your, uh, can I ask some co personal questions regarding your lifestyle? Of course. Do you smoke? No, I don't. Uh, okay, what about drinking? Uh, once in a while, you know, okay. socially. Yeah. Okay, and uh, who do you live with? Uh, I live with my uh, wife. Okay, and uh, what do you, um, okay, so, uh, what do you think so you're suffering with? Well, I'm thinking, so is it, maybe it's, that's all, this pain is related to what happened to me years ago. Maybe we, or what happened to me has come back. I don't know. So then I, I'm, I'm really worried that I might need to go to surgery again, you know, and I don't want to lose any, you know, month for, because of my playing career. And I don't want to stop playing football so. So that's my main concern. So, and I want that to be done as soon as possible. 
your concerns are completely understandable sir we'll uh, uh, we'll uh, keep this thing in my mind and try to uh, solve it out and uh, can you please tell me your expectations uh, regarding your um, condition that what you're expecting from us to apart from this that uh, you get you want to solve this problem yeah i just want to solve this problem i would okay. I, i don't want to fit in again i want to go back to training and i want to start playing football again as soon okay. as possible Yeah. yeah 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 we'll try our best you're in best surgical hands we have showed i um, just want to reassure you that and we'll try our best so that you can get back to your normal life and uh, uh, so i will just uh, uh, but dr odon please so will i be, will i need surgery again what is uh, yeah um, actually it's uh, i'm not sure about this at the moment because i need to uh, discuss your case with a consultant and we need to do some x rays of the joint i need to do some other investigation if required and then okay. i can come back to you and uh, and then we can decide uh, tell you about that so do you have any other questions oh, nothing i just want you know i just wish if if there's going to be surgery i want to be fit as soon as possible i don't want to be bedridden for a very long time that just your 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 concern is completely understandable yeah. uh, i would try my best to solve it out okay that's all okay, right okay doctor Okay, so yeah, just I will come. Okay. Yeah, I will just uh, come. I have a chat with my consultant, and then we can come back and examine you and uh, do the required investigation. That's fine. Thank you, doctor. Yeah, that's Thank fine. Thank you. Okay. So uh, now I will try to summarize my case. Uh, to to uh, take history from a uh, 30 year old uh, footballer sam who presented uh, to us with a swelling in the and knee joint pain from the last 3 months the patient also gave history of the uh, similar pain in past few years uh, that was uh, uh, that occurred after a trauma to knee joint while playing football and he was then operated upon that uh, today uh, the patient is complaining of uh, increased severity of the pain the pain started gradually and gradually progressed uh, the patient is uh, having associated um associated feeling of giving away of the knee joint while walking and uh, the pain is relieved with the uh, painkillers and rest and it is aggravated with the walking and uh, playing football uh, the patient uh, rates his pain on a scale of 5 to 6 uh, out of 10 and uh, along with that patient is having no other uh, no stiffness in the knee joint and no involvement of any other joint no history of fever or rash and uh, uh, along with the uh, with the past history the patient has uh, um, this history of the injury to knee joint a uh, few years back but patient does not know what the problem was he was operated upon and then he was fit and well and uh, he was continuing with his uh, uh, football playing football and he has no allergies and non smoker and uh, occasion drink social drinker lives with his wife so um, according to my uh, uh, history my differential diagnosis are uh, anterior cruciate ligament injury it could be a meniscal injury and um, it could be um, osteoarthritis hematrosis or uh, it could be a traumatic uh, uh, injury to the um, collateral ligament okay it could I'm be start right okay okay let, let me just continue so uh, what are your management plan for this patient Ma'am has ma'am is not here. Yeah, I just noticed. <laughs> so what are your management plan? So my management plan will be so I will start this uh, um by discussing it with the on call consultant the orthopedic uh, TNO consultant and then I'm going to first uh, make the patient pain relief. <laughs> will provide adequate pain relief to the patient uh, and then i would uh, do the weight bearing x rays of the knee joint the ap and lateral view and also the hip joint and ankle joint to rule out any uh, any uh, fracture or any uh, other problem after this uh, uh, i would uh, i would like to uh, discuss this case with my consultant and uh, if uh, if required after discussing this i'm going to do uh, mri of the patient i'm going to perform mri uh i can you hear me Until, yeah i can hear you okay and then uh we can do the arthroscopy of the knee joint and uh, and if there is a ligamentous injury which is reconfirmed on mri then we can proceed towards surgical repair of the uh, uh anterior cruciate ligament you know repair okay yeah i think that is a anything major... that I, that i missed i, I no, don't know you, about actually, the answer... Yes, I'll answer most of the questions. So, 
you know, without, but, but I think maybe you took more time because there's no timing. Then one more question. So uh, what are the, uh, clav uh, if, assuming this is a tibia uh, fracture, right? Mm -hmm. So, hello? Yeah, yeah, hello. So assuming this is a tibia fracture, or can you classif classify a uh, type of a uh, tibia plateau fracture? Assuming this is a tibia plateau fracture. No, tibia. Huh? I know, I just know the name that's, of the classification. That's, that, that, that's too much for her. Yeah, no, that's no, too no, much. No, no, I asked because, I asked because. She had taken classification, I Hold think on. so. Yeah, it exactly, is there. yeah. Yeah, because I know the name, but. The chapters, because, the chapters, but, but that one, you need to be able to most no, of the time. Job, so no, no, <laughs> yeah, I thought, I, I thought so, but during the last uh, October exam in Edinburgh, they asked the question. Huh? This question. Huh? Yes. Who did that? That, that was me. So, so, wow. the that I did in the, so that's what I'm asking. Oh, I think okay. so. In, I, I, I let you. me let me try. I think so. In, in the uh, there are five. Uh, I think so. Six. Six. And uh, yeah. in the first there is uh, incomplete, <laughs> incomplete uh, line passing through the medial. Uh, don't worry. I myself I, I can't recall. So I just have to open. <laughs> but I guess we can go and study it for this station because the person said they asked the question. So which means it could come out again. Okay, I don't know this classification. So I think Sorry. the first type is a, a splitting type. So type two will be splitting plus depression. Type three will be uh, with central depression. Type four will be splitting fracture with the media plateau. Then about type five bicondylar and the type C is the complete uh, dissociation of the metaphysis and the diaphysis. That's it, that's it. That's yeah, you're right. Uh -huh. I, I myself, I can't, I can't recall. I just, I just check it online. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is the structure what? classification, so yeah, it's a bit no even if you're because, able to, it's, it's because when person to told me, I, I was like, they, they can't ask this in MRC, this is like more, but he said, he, he said it, would, it was asked that assuming the, the tibia plus factor, can you please classify? <laughs> okay, I never knew that because I hate these orthopedic classifications, <laughs> you're not alone, <laughs> <Trust me. laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> So, okay, mom is back. I think she's back. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my network is that. Okay, can you all hear me? My network is really bad. Dr. Aisha, yes, I was yes, listening. Mm. Uh, I was listening to your... Uh, history taking and exactly when you were about to finish and you were about to uh, I was saying present your case I got disconnected and then it took me a while to reconnect I got disconnected twice when I got reconnected you were telling the management to Dr. Sunday so I thought that was good she's telling and then I got disconnected again <laughs> oh no that's fine man <laughs> yeah now you were discussing yeah more when he story. asked me so difficult question, she had to get classification. I don't know it. I, I, I don't know it either. So, <laughs> my to... voice is clear now. Okay. Yes, yes. Sir, your voice is clear. No, Ulfat is coming. Okay, I'm really sorry. I, I can't, I'm not in a position to give you feedback because I wasn't. No, that's fine, man. But one thing I noticed because before I got disconnected that you covered everything and you took history within the given time. So okay. this is very oh, good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Out of all of you, like he managed to take the history within the given time. And like it wasn't, she wasn't rushing even. She was just going normally. Oh, so, okay, yeah, so that's a plus. But then I couldn't, I couldn't be with you for management and all that. Oh, okay, ma'am. So, why I am seeing myself twice? Okay, uh, I don't know. Should we take the risk? Yes, I might think so. Yeah, because one doctor, Muhammad, and one doctor, Sunday, have to present their station, so...
Right, but should I bring something? Ah, oh, right, okay. Can, uh, yeah, can anyone help Dr. Sunday with history taking? Okay, let me help. Okay, cool. Okay, if you're ready, can I start the timer? Yes. All, all right, started the timer and here is the question. Right, if you have read and understood, kindly begin your history. Yes. So, uh, hello, uh, I'm Dr. Sandy, one of the surgical uh, doctor. Uh, can I just confirm your name Hello. and age, please? Hello. I am Mr. James, 77 years old. Oh, nice to meet you. Mr. James, right? Yes. Oh, James, okay. Nice to meet you. So, I'll be asking you um, some questions. Is that okay with you? Mm, that's fine. Okay, so uh, can you tell me uh, what is the problem? I mean, what brought it in today? So, doctor, um, for the past um, six months, I've been having problem with uh, my urination. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. So, when you mean problem, mm -hmm. what exactly? Uh, what kind of problem exactly? Can you just? So I go to please? the washroom uh, more frequently. And then okay. whenever I am stressed, I can hold it. I can keep it. Sometimes um, it comes on me. And then when I go, okay. it's very, very hard. Like it's like it comes little by, by little. Okay. And then I have to so, train for it to come here. Okay. Okay. So uh, I would like to ask, uh, do you feel any pain at all throughout this process? Mm, not really. Okay, perfect. So uh, I would like to ask you, so you said you go to the toilet um, more often, right? So do you also yes. experience it do at night? Does it wake you up from sleep? Yes, um, I do. It does, okay. uh, it does wake me up from sleep, yeah. Okay, so uh, you said something about the, uh, you sometimes wet yourself and uh, after uh, urinating, do you feel like uh, uh, you've not completely, you know, uh, evacuated uh, the urine? Yes, doctor. That's how it feels. Oh, okay. Okay. So, can I just ask something sensitive? Uh, do you have any problem with your uh, erection? I mean, maintaining erection. No. Okay. no I don't have any, okay. any problem with my erection. Okay. Then, uh, have you noticed any change in color of your room lately? No. No. The color has not changed. Okay. Okay. So, and uh, uh, have you noticed any flank pain? No, 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 doctor, not really. Okay, why well, you know that bone pain? No, no bone pain. Okay, have you noticed any changes in your appetite and a possible uh, weight loss, honest pain weight loss? No, I've not, I've not lost appetite, and then I've not lost any weight intentionally. Okay, what about the fever? There's no fever. Okay, so do you have, you have, do you have any past history of uh, trauma? I mean, trauma to your uh, mouth or something in the past? Trauma to my what? To your mouth. No, 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 no. I've never had. Okay. How yeah. about any uh, 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 infection? 
you know, than the, mm-hmm. the past? No, no. Okay. Okay. So uh, you said uh, if I'm going to if I if I can recall what you said you said so you you fish uh, your distant uh, dribbling during when mm-hmm. you're passing water right then yes. you feel like hesitancy then you cannot you feel like you have not completely evacuate your bladder right okay yeah. so uh, is there another thing you would like to that probably I miss that would like to add nothing much okay. that's what I've so been I like that's have been my complaint. Okay, okay, okay. I understand. Don't worry. Uh, then uh, I would like to ask about uh, so your past medical issue. So have you been seen to, to keep it for anything? Any no, I'm illness? not being treated for any illness. Just, just the patient is taking about... nasal spray. Patient is taking nasal spray. Okay, okay. Patient, okay. patient is what? Taking nasal spray. Uh, okay. okay. With temsulosin. So the... Yes. Okay, okay. So, uh, have you had any surgery in the past? No, I've not had any surgery. Okay. So, uh, Mr. James, I would like to ask you some, some more personal questions. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, so uh, what do you do for a living? I've retired. Okay. And uh, who lives with you at home? I live with my wife. Okay, and uh, uh, do you smoke? Yes, I used to smoke. Okay, but you stopped. Like, when did you stop? About 20 years ago. Okay, fine, that's fine. Do you drink? Occasionally. Okay. So, uh, uh, Mr. James, uh, can you please tell me, have you given the thought what must have caused this your difficulty? Or do you have any yeah, idea so what caused it? Yes, so, so, so I've been on um, some solo things. I think it's because of my substrate. So because of that, I think I'm having this. But what I don't know is whether it's still that or it's cancer. So I just want okay, to know say, what it is. Uh, that must be difficult. So you're talking about prostate. So what happened to your prostate? If you can just tell me more. I've been on medication for the prostate. They gave me some solution. So okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Okay. Then, uh, uh, so what are you most concerned about? Yes, uh, it's uh, about the increase in urination, always going to the washroom, and then the um, dribbling aspect. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. So, uh, what about what are you expecting from me to do for you? So I'll know uh, what I, um, what my condition is and then how to uh, relieve my symptoms and then to solve it, the problem. Uh, yeah, don't worry. Uh, we will get to the root of this together. So we we'll work together and try to find out what is going on with you and we're going to uh, treat your condition. Mm-hmm. So thank you for your time. Um, I will need to go and discuss with my, with my senior now and I'll get back to you to discuss uh, the further step in your management. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your time. Can you present your case now? So today I uh, took the issue of a 77 year old uh, male. So we presented with a complaint of uh, increased frequency and urgency and post stream and uh, straining. So with also incomplete emptying of bladder. So he has no pain and this started like six months, less than six months. And uh, he said uh, he has been treated for uh, uh, with uh, uh, tamoxifen, which is a medication for penile prostatic hyperplasia. So, and it's worried that this might be cancer and yes. uh, uh, we wanted to uh, know the treatment. So, I'm based on the, uh, f- my findings. So, my main, main differential diagnosis will be uh, uh, urinary retention, secondary to benign prostatic hyperplasia. However, yes. I would like to also consider uh, prostatic cancer, which is possible, yes. or bladder cancer, or urethral yes. stricture, which is also possible yes. in this case. Okay, so, how should this patient be managed? Yeah, for management first, after the history, I will have to take proper, uh, uh, do proper examination of the patient. So, yes. and also uh, do the examination uh, for the prostate and papate. Then after that, I would like to also uh, perform a baseline blood analysis, then to check yes. for PSA level in the blood and the uh, carcinogenic antigen to exclude other, any source of uh, cancer, cancer tumor marker. Then after that, uh, I will do urine analysis, urine deep test, and also check to exclude any form of infection cause. Then after that, 
uh, we can we cannot go to um, normal uh, non contract the CT scan of the bladder, urethra. Then uh, of course, then of course after that we can do biopsy of the prostate if it's suspect cancer. After that, they, I have to discuss with MDT to discuss yes. the staging and to proper management. And um, management can be first. Of course, we can do the uh, ta, um, medical. Yes. top or uh, medical or surgical. So medical, yes. we can continue the uh, finasteride or uh, tansulin. So that's an alpha, yes. uh, uh, one alpha uh, reductase inhibitor. So which will help, help to reduce and improve the uh, this thing. And if the urinary infection is acute, we can uh, pass urinary bladder and uh, urinary catheter to relieve the symptoms for now. Then if there's need for surgery, we can do uh, top yes. surgery to reduce it or enucleation of the prostate gland. Good. Good. Okay. Someone has got disconnected. Many people got disconnected. I think the next talk today is not so good. It's what? Network, network is bad. Yes, it's very bad. Yeah, I think network more, is bad. More, uh, right, okay. it was good. Yeah. You. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fatima and Dr. Sunday. It was good. Thank it's you. just that 30 seconds you've taken extra. Uh, that was like when you were discussing about the con idea, concern, and expectation. So in, in expectation, you took a little longer time. Otherwise, it was good. Uh, right. What else I had to ask you? Yes, you didn't ask about the history of appetite and weight loss. Ask. Because in the differentiation, I asked. I asked. You did? Okay. He did, he did yeah. yes. He did ask. He did. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry, then I missed. Okay, right. Good. So you're getting there. Yes. Now, last station of my today. Uh, if you can, Dr. Sandy, help Dr. Mohammed. Okay. Yes, Dr. Mohammed, are you there? Okay, mom, I yes. am ready. Thank you. All right. Let's see, mom. Yes. Right. So if both of you are ready, can I start the timer? Yes. Yes. Just a moment. Ready. Yes. Okay. Started the timer and here is your question. Okay. Right, if you have read and understood, kindly begin your station. Okay. Uh, hello, good evening. I am hello. Dr. Mohammed Layan, one of the. Yes. Hello, good hello, evening, yeah. doctor. Good evening. Yeah. Okay. I am Dr. Mohammed Layan. I am one of the surgical doctor registral working for Mr. Mann in X Hospital. I am calling to, to speak with uh, Mr. David as a vascular consult on call to ask him uh, uh, about uh, advice uh, the patient. Uh, can I check that I am speaking to Mr. David? Yes, Mr. David on the line. Okay, uh, 54 years old lady admitted with diagnosis of myeloid diverticulitis uh, with uh, here the symptom improved with intravenous uh, fluid and antibiotic. She is now complaining of the sudden onset of acute and the severe left lower uh, limb pain. Uh, 
uh, on examination uh, uh, ECG uh, show atrial fibrillation with board preventricular complex and uh, the uh, EBG show metabolic acidosis with hypokalemia and arterial duplex confirm acute uh, limb uh, ischemia. We, we are uh, hoping to transfer here to your specialist care for definitive treatment and the update about uh, about of this management of this case. Okay, so uh, you, you said uh, uh, the patient uh, has had a, uh, ECG changes, right? Atrial fibrillation. So do you need to consult a cardiology for review for this PVC before the transfer? I think the limb is more serious and the, the, uh, the BVC can be assessed later on the BVC can result from the electrolyte implants. Okay, so uh, what do you think is happening to the patient? And why do you uh, uh, come to the conclusion of the uh, acute limb ischemia? Uh, please, doctor, uh, not here. Like, oh, uh, what do you think is happening to the patient? Why is it urgent? Why do you think it's what's happening to the patient? Okay, uh, yes, it is urgent. Uh, the patient has acute limb ischemia. And uh, so as the early intervention is extremely needed for uh, uh, to avoid losing of the limb. Yeah, so why did the patient uh, 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 has uh, acute limb ischemia? What caused acute limb ischemia in this patient? Because of uh, atrial fibrillation, uh, in this case, secondly, to uh, uh, acute limb ischemia. Yes. And presence of, then you have to consider presence of mesenteric ischemia. Yeah. Yeah. So, can lead to uh, uh, with the mesenteric ischemia because of the uh, because of atrial fibrillation led to uh, uh, lower limb ischemia and the mesenteric ischemia secondary yes. to okay. basal embolus, okay. the portal circulation. Okay. So, uh, do you want to do uh, any scan of the abdomen first before transfer? Uh, we will need uh, uh, to scan here abdomen, but I think uh, after transfer. Okay. So uh, you said uh, mesentery ischemia, right? So uh, why uh, yeah. what, uh, have you done the abdominal examination or any CT scan to confirm this? Yes, it could be, but uh, for now the abdomen is soft and not tender. I will do a serial and abdominal examination if we need my uh, do CT scan of the abdomen with contrast if the renal function with the normal after transfer. Okay, so what are your management plans for this patient? Yeah, the, the plan of the management uh, according to the ABC uh, approach of the CRISP protocol, airway assessment and the breathing assessment and the treatment and the uh, circulation uh, assessment. Uh, uh, I will I will uh, uh, arrange uh, with ICU to start cardioversion and the anticoagulant uh, to complete uh, to the way uh, to the hospital and uh, manage it, uh, atrial fibrillation. Okay. So, and uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, ambulance do you need to transfer these patients? Ambulance uh, uh, will uh, equipment with monitoring and the cardioversion and the CBR equipment. Okay, so you mentioned atrial fibrillation. So, can you tell me the specific uh, management for atrial fibrillation? Yeah, uh, start uh, uh, the, the start the uh, 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 with the anticoagulant. Uh, ask unfractionated uh, five thousand international unit bolus, then uh, fifty international unit uh, every uh, kilogram every hour infusion and follow up by uh, EBTT is between uh, forty five to sixty second. Okay, so what about uh, the rate control? How will you control the rate in atrial fibrillation? Yeah, uh, I will arrange uh, to the ICU to start cardioversion and the anticoagulant to complete uh, the way to the hospital. Yeah, that is if the patient is unstable. I mean, what if the patient is hemodynamically unstable? Uh, and you want to control the rate, the heart, uh, the heartbeat. 
how uh, how would you do that? Yeah, uh, after uh, after stabilize the the, the patient uh, with the uh, with more monitoring the patient with blood pressure and urine output and the ECG uh, 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 correction of the uh, of the uh, of the atrial fibrillation by unfortunate tiberine and uh, after that uh, uh, transfer the patient. Okay. What would you do if the patient's so, renal function is not normal? Uh, I will perform abd uh, abdominal duplex for mesenteric physics or uh, magnetic resonant uh, angiography. Okay, what uh, you he told? What type of? Or what would you tell her family, patient's family? I will tell them uh, about the patient have developed acute reduction of the circulation in uh, lower limb, which may be need urgent intervention, and uh, uh, we are going to transfer her to vascular consult. Okay, how would you manage uh, limb ischemia? If the limb is viable, uh, I will perform a thrombolysis like uh, like uh, streptokinase and the embolectomy or a bifogartic catheter or bypass operation with or without fasciotomy. If the limb is not viable, I will go for uh, amputation. Okay, you can send the patient over. Was there any more questions left? Oh, I don't sorry. think so. Thank you. I don't think so. Yes. Yeah. Just 2019, 20, 20 seconds or less. So maybe in 20 yeah. seconds, you can summarize whatever advice you've got from the consultant. Okay, ma'am. Uh, 54 years old lady. Uh, so what consultant admitted, uh, said uh, that what to do and then send the patient. So everything that you have discussed. Yes, I am sent out for uh, vascular intervention to treat the arterial limb ischemia. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but Dr. Mohamed, um, you did well, but um, you did not answer one of my questions. And the question is about uh, atrial fibrillation management. Yeah. So, because you jump straight to anticoagulation, which is part of it. However, uh, because you need to treat the patient according to whether the patient is hemodynamically uh, stable or not stable patient. So for stable patient, the first step is to give to do rate control with a beta blocker, bisoprolol, you titrate. Then when the patient uh, uh, rate becomes stable, then you can now uh, do uh, maybe chadva score or risk of retrombolism and give a oral uh, mm -hmm. anticoagulant like uh, warfarin or arbitrate uh, or any of that oral anticoagulant. That is for stable patient. Therefore, stable patient, like you said, you can proceed with a uh, synchronized cardioversion with shock or chemical cardioversion with amidarone, starting with 150 milligram, then we repeat with 300 milligram. If that does not work. Then when the patient becomes stable, then you have to now give a, a, a heparin, like you said, unfortunate heparin, like you said, 5,000 transitional units, then continue with the bolus, then after 15, or uh, uh, is it five or 15 per uh, unit per kg until APTTP is double, that's from 40 to 60 uh, seconds. Then you still have to uh, give a uh, oral anticoagulant later. You know, and if the atrial fibrillation is more than 48 hours, you have to give oral anticoagulant like warfarin. So that is like the general scheme of the management of atrial fibrillation. But the first thing you should do is whether the patient is stable or not, and to do rate control, because uh, the anti uh, heparin is just to prevent the further um, tumorbolism. It will not really control the rate. So beta blocker was the one I was looking for when I asked you what how will you control the rate. So good, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. It was good. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Doctor Sunday. Thank you, Doctor Mohamed. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor Sunday. Thank you, everyone. It's good that you are studying and you are reading and you are sharing knowledge really helpful yes so we managed to do our today's revision otherwise me and dr hana were sitting and waiting and we were thinking maybe we should stop today's revision